Welcome back, Acron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching Schalke vs. Cybernetic Pony on Imperium. And Imperium is, I believe, a map we've seen fairly recently. Schalke going for CISO early on, Cybernetic Pony probably also going for CISO. Actually, according to game replays, they both randomed, and Schalke does actually normally random. Both randoming into CISO. Or, wait, what? No, apparently Cybernetic Pony randomed into Grekum. Maybe he switches. The description is suggested as a CISO mirror, but, well, just go what we see. So, Cybernetic Pony is going for Grekum, not going for CISO. Anyway, this map, like I said, is not probably the most familiar. You have the start points at the northeast and southwest. You have expansions off the ridges right next to the bases, as well as right beside them, as well as over the corners. This is a map that came about well before Cold Forge did, so it doesn't have the Cold Forge style economy. Using the older, lots of crates around the map style economy, and since it's a Merovingian map, it also has the separation between crates like this, so you can stick resource processors right in between and make it really easy to switch between Q Plasma and Liquid Crystal, at least for a couple of them. Shalka going for very early RPs and importers. I'm a little bit surprised that he is doing that on this map. I mean, yeah, I'm surprised he's not going for the importer earlier. This map isn't that big. The rush distance is not that big. Having the five RPs now, he is really, he's playing for the late game. However, luckily for him, so is Cybernetic Pony. Cybernetic Pony is going for an Octo Scout harassment, but he apparently is going for the economic game as well. I don't see this being a problem. I think we're going to see a late game match and a factory coming up very early as well. 243 mark. Okay, not that early, but 243 mark anyway. Schalke is going for standard fast forward into macro. Cybernetic Pony is actually staying at the present to macro, interestingly, not fast forwarding to set everything up early. I never actually noticed that before. I didn't pay much attention. I sort of had taken it as given that players just fast forward to macro, and I suppose that's more of a thing that happened before. A lot of older players would do that. Cybernetic Pony is actually getting attacked pretty heavily in the future, not that I'm sure he cares. He'll likely be able to defend against this. He has the Octo coming up and not meeting this. Actually, you know what? Maybe not. Cybernetic Pony and Shalka do have their forces going along opposite sides. But I think Cybernetic Pony is going to be prepared. He's getting an Octo, probably not setting that up for a resource processor, probably using that to defend. One Octo will not be enough. It will come close. If it hits the Special Ops first, that'll be better, because of course it means that no healing. However, one Octo is not enough. Shalka needs to build a second one. He has the money for it. I don't see him using that money. I don't know where it's going. Oh, that's why. Because I'm not looking at Shalka, I'm looking at 790 Pony. Shalka's money, however, is going for the macro fab at the 4 minute mark. Very quickly getting a macro fab, probably getting Mar tanks. Okay, this is bizarre. I swear the replay description suggested that they were playing CISO. However, 790 Pony still has a chance to jump back and change his species. Nope, he is going for Octos. He's going for Grekum. It's too late now. He is... Getting a second Octo that will be sufficient to defend. The Special Ops, however, will kill the Octo before taking really any damage. And at the same time, Shalka is taking some damage from that Octo. His factory getting beaten down a bit. From his point of view, jumping back to the 250 mark, his infantry are all out of base, actually. They're all out of position. He's not prepared to defend against this. But he is moving back. He is stopping his own attack to make sure he doesn't lose his mech. Therefore, doesn't lose his macro fab. And therefore, probably will be building Mar Tanks. But Cybernetic Pony at the 320 mark, he is continuing to go for economy, he has, successfully he has successfully defended, he has also successfully forced Shalka to echo out that attack. Shalka, on the other hand, able to defend, but had to at least delay his attack, and it looks like he is not even attacking in the first place, he is... Nope, he's keeping everything back in his base. Or not, nope, he's going back in. He's pretty undecided, but he is going, it looks like he is ultimately going for harassment, going around the side, avoiding the auto completely, just going for the resource processors in the back. We'll see that in about, well, a minute up from there, so about the 3.30 mark, I'm guessing, if not the 4.30 mark, is when the units will come back. So for all Cybernetic Pony knows, he is quite safe, and as we know, actually, maybe we don't know, maybe he is safe. This blue time, I will carry the truth, but... As far as can be told, he's actually fairly safe. That Special Ops and Marine should be coming along any minute now. Or once this blue time wave comes, you should see them. And now it comes. They are currently not here, actually. Okay, well, I guess that's a bust then. 
Yep, they're still in the main base. Shalka has not actually attacked with them. That's bizarre. I know I saw the attack. It looked like it was going, but I guess he's ultimately not going for it. Which means now we just have to play find the special ops, because... It's gotta be around here somewhere. It might just be that the blue time up hasn't come up. That's probably what it is. And Martanks being built up. No ground units for Twin Mars, just going for straight Martanks. Cybernetic Pony back to the 457 mark. He is continuing to build up. He is getting a couple seppies for reefs. Probably getting advanced structure soon. And, okay, here we go. This is what I was looking for. The attack was on the green time wave, not the blue time wave. And Shalka is taking, dealing a lot of damage. Get He's killing this RP, closing all these ones. You can see four RPs are getting closed in the process of this. I'm being attacked. The orange bar is being an RP being closed. And the white here being something being killed. Very likely a resource processor. Minato coming in to try to defend against this and stop this from happening. Shalka sees this is happening. Pretty sure sees this happening. But he might not. Cybernetic Pony had just set that order and jumped away, so this attack may deal some damage, but it likely won't kill Cybernetic Pony. These Mar tanks, however, are a different story. And this mech also in the corner, not sure why it's there, it might be trying to build an armory here for further expansion. The Octo is able to come in to defend, is moving back as well, and another Octo being built, so. Cybernetic Pony will have no problems defending against this. No, that Octo going for an RP, so there actually might be some problems. The Special Ops will move back, and will be taken out by a second Octo. It'll deal some damage, but I think the Octo... No, the Octo will lose. It'll be close. The Octo's gonna be heavily damaged, but it's not gonna die. Octos can be Special Ops in one-on-one. -on -one. I think once I've seen it go the other way, the Special Ops got really lucky, but for the most part, Octos will be Special Ops every time. That's, however, a distraction. The Macrofab continuing to be built up. No change there. Cybernetic Pony not able to really harass on his own. He lost a couple of autos in the process. That is the cost of resource processor. And Shalka taking advantage of that because that's also the liquid crystal cost of a Macrofab. So Shalka's slightly ahead right now. He's also, from his point of view, completely winning. But that's just his point of view. That's just like his opinion, man. The reality is, Cybernetic Pony's fine. Cybernetic Pony, however, is building up kind of slowly. We did see the reefs were going to be coming up around the five minute mark. And of course, with that, we'll have advanced structures and thus air units. And air units are the best counter you can have for Martanks. Octopods would also work well, but air units are the best counter. And Martanks are coming in at the 735 mark. Shalka is three minutes up from Cybernetic Pony. And I don't think Cybernetic Pony is even aware of these Martanks are coming. I don't know if he even cares. He should care. Why he's not getting a reef, however, it's the 520 mark. Where is that reef? The Martanks are ready. The reefs are not. There is that reef. Okay, good. So one reef is up. A second reef looks like it's likely to come up soon. And the Faro is getting ready for advanced structures. Putting itself right in the middle to set up the spire in between all of the progenerating units. Not really necessary, but I guess he likes the aesthetics of it. And a second Octo coming in, able to see the Martanks, not able to do anything to them, but able to spot them. So, Cybernetic Pony, well aware of what's going on now. He is not going to be caught by surprise. J, J Raccoon pointing out in the chat that Twin Mars would be a better option, and that is correct, they would be. Why is Shaka not research ground units? I don't know. He has the money for it, and using that, he would be very much able to get rid of this base. He does have another Macrofab being built on the south side of the map at the 827 mark, three minutes up. So he's definitely prepared for the long haul on this one. But I am still concerned. I don't know why it is that he has not built up Twin Mars. Because, I mean, Martanks... No, I don't know why he's built Twin Mars. Martanks do have a slightly higher fire rate, but Twin Mars have the splash damage and have much higher damage. Just, they kill everything. They just melt anything in front of them. They're like hydrofluoric acid. Whatever you put in it, it melts. Air units are about the only counter you have. Like flying above them, they have some. They have a decent anti-air attack for a dedicated anti-ground artillery unit, which basically means they have a pea shooter that can hit air. Mar tanks have nothing. Mar tanks are completely defenseless against air, so this far bot here will actually stand quite a good shot at taking out all of the Mar tanks. The Octopod assistance would also be great, and the Sepipod coming up just in case air units do come in from Shaka, which is quite viable actually. Shalka could build a frigate or two to get rid of the Aryans, clear the skies, and make his Martanks completely safe. Another small surprise. Especially 
given this macro fab down here, we're at the 828 mark now from 70 points point of view at the 750 mark, where the macro fab is being constructed. And 70 point looks like he's setting up an octo with the north. Not a far would be almost a better idea just as a backup build in Arcticus, set up an additional triad even. However, with the Octopod and Farbot support, these Mark Tanks are going down. Twin Mars wouldn't quite have the same problem, but Mars support with Frigates would also work. That'd be another option. The Frigates support primarily for getting rid of the air units, of course. The Twin Mars, however, would just rip these Octos to shreds, and the Octopod would have no chance whatsoever. The single Mar Tank, however, not doing as good of a job. I believe the Octos actually have a damage modifier against Mar Tanks. I don't believe they have one against Twin Mars. I'd have to double check that one. Yeah, Jericho pointing out that only cloaking units have a, have any sort of damage reduction from Twin Mars. So, I'm pretty sure that's the case. I'm pretty sure it's just cloakers, but I know that Octo has some damage modifiers against, I'm quite certain, tanks. I'm not entirely sure about Mar tanks. It would not surprise me if Mar tanks were damage reduction, especially since these Octos are only taking about 9 damage a shot, and the Mar tanks deal 73 damage every 5 seconds. So, basically, they deal about 16 damage a shot, which would lend credence to the idea that it is a damage reduction. In fact, I'll double check right now. The... Farapod still dealing with this. Getting rid of... Well, trying to get rid of that Mar Tank there. It's going to be a bit difficult, however, just because... Sorry for the Mar Tank. It's going to be difficult with the Mar Tank just because... With that Air Force, there's really not much that Shalka can do with his Mar Tank strategy. I mean, he's gotten rid of all the Octos. That's... Apparently not a problem, or they've been pushed back, but that's not the point. The point is that the Sparpot and Semipod are taking care of them without any issue. And back in Shalka's base, at his point of view, he is getting up some Lancers. Not a bad choice, but well, Frigus might be the better one. This attack from the north is definitely beneficial. It's still not sure if it's going to be enough. And double check, the Octo does actually... The Octo does have a damage modifier from none of them. Neither the Mar nor the Twin Mar. It takes... It does have damage modifiers from other units, but not the Twin Mar. So I was wrong about that one. The Octo is just only taking 9 damage from the Mar Tanks, because the Mar Tanks don't deal that much damage per shot. So Twin Mars would be the best way to go, just because of the damage output. Sheer damage output. The Lancer first one is up, the second one will be up fairly soon. But even then, that's going to be... Oh, that's one Macrofab down. That's the cost of a Frigate right there, is that Macrofab. I'm serious, that's actually the cost of a Frigate. It's 86.44 compared to Macrofab's 80.60. That Macrofab in the south there did a bit. Built a ma built a Mar or two. Right now, 7 Pony, however, at the 10-minute mark. Moving back to the Sparpods, getting rid of these last few Mar tanks. Taking some damage to his Arcticus, but nothing the Reefs can't heal, even with the energy limitation. However, it would mean that the reefs are out of energy. Lancer's coming in for additional harassment. Not a bad choice. And there we go, there's a frigate. I was looking for that one. Shalka back in his point of view at the 1030 mark. His Lancer's coming in, a frigate being built. Not built yet, and these Martanks, one of them moving in, getting past the... It doesn't matter, getting past the Arctic, getting to these Octo and Progenerating, but Octos in Progeneration mode heal up on their own. Sorry, they don't heal up on their own. That's Octopods. Pod class heals up on their own. I... The Reefs, however, are healing up this Octo, so it's just not going to get damaged. It just isn't. There's really... There's really no reason to build that many. Honestly, I don't understand why he built so many. Oh, never mind. It actually does have... It does regenerate health when it's regenerating. Double check the wiki on that one too. So Octos are healing up. An Octo in Progen mode basically can't be killed by a single Mar Tank. And counterattack by the Farapods and Semipod, getting rid of that single frigate. Nothing else being built up. Cybernetic Pony getting rid of this Macrofab as well. Shalka is at 12 minute mark. He does have a second frigate this time around, and this is changing the tide completely. A third frigate as well. So all he needed was additional frigates to get rid of Cybernetic Pony's forces. So what we saw before was a complete lie. Cybernetic Pony actually. Lost his Air Force. Once again, we're fairly even. Advanced structures being built... Sorry, not advanced structures. That's machinery being built up. Advanced structures have already been built up. That was a while ago. That's why we had the Farapods in the first place. Tooltip might need to be changed. But 
or not the tooltip, the message on research may need to be changed. Machinery, however, is being is what is being researched for Shalka. Probably gonna get I might get Tornads. Basically opens up healing units, which he, wouldn't surprise me if he went for. He is however going for a Tornad. That is what he's planning on. And getting that harassment going as well. Cybernetic Pony, jumping back to the 1216 mark. He's not really prepared to deal with this harassment. He does have some Octobots coming in. They will be effective against getting rid of the frigates if they get into position. Maybe not in time, but he's more focused on defending the southern expansion than the western expansion. Shalka, he only has one Tornado right now. His frigate's moving back at the 1354 mark. About a minute and a half up from where Cybernetic Pony was, and moving once again to attack the Tornado. Ah, here he goes. Heavy Cruiser. Not that surprising, given that he went for machinery at the 14 minute mark of the game. Heavy cruisers aren't a bad idea. Just nice tank and overall damage dealer. The Tornado, however, is what's going to be getting rid of the Octopods while the Frigate take care of the Pharopod. But the Pharopod isn't really a threat. The, the main threat is just the fact that Octopods are fairly tough. They aren't... They deal a decent amount of damage against air. They actually get rid of... They got rid of one of the Frigates, the Hierarchy Leader of all of them. And heavily damaged the other one, who is retreating. I don't see any... Oh, there's an MFB. I was going to say, I don't see any healing units yet, but the MFB is under construction. It will be up in about 30 seconds. That frigate will heal up just fine. Because heal healing for CISO is the thing they do worst. They need macrofab and machinery in order to get either of their healing units that aren't just the special ops for infantry healing. Heavy Cruiser coming around to try to make sure that harassment is successful here, and it is indeed. Cybernetic Pony, however, a minute down from here at the 1410 mark. Sending in more Sevi Pods to get rid of these... Preemptively getting rid of the frigates, losing one of the Sevi Pods to the frigates, but killing a frigate in the process. Sevi Pods are not as strong as frigates. Frigates will beat Sevi Pods, I think, for cost. It's Sevi Ligos and frigates that tended to be about where you have two frigates to one Sevi Ligo. That's you. That's where you had a lot of fights go on. But Grecum doesn't go into Ligo class very much recently. They've typically been sticking to Pod class. But the Sevi Pod, the fourteen forty four mark, Shalka has jumped back and. Okay, from his point of view, he's actually lost. He is building up another frigate and the heavy cruiser, but he's actually lost the fight from here. Cybernetic Pony, see from his point of view, that the Sevi Pod has done well enough. Even if it may not be the same tech level, it's done fine anti air. But yeah, the frigate is just 8844 for, or 8644 for essentially what the Sevi Pod does. At, why is there no Sevi Pod option here? Oh, the Octo is not in progeneration mode, that's why. When it's in progeneration mode, we can double check the cost of that, because Sevi Pods, I believe, are considerably more expensive. They are 11058 for 84 dam or like 16.8 damage per second. Frigates, on the other hand, deal 103 damage per well, five seconds, so 21 damage per second or so against air. For a slightly lower cost. So for cost, frigates beat Sevi Pods hands down. However, Build time is the other issue. Shaka only having one macrofab at this point means he can't easily build this up. And Cybernetic Pony is saving a lot of cash. He's going to get Gay Tech fairly soon, or Chrono Pony rather, fairly soon. And when that happens, I don't think Shaka will have a chance. Losing his Heavy Cruiser, he's losing a lot of units. He has his MFB coming up finally. But unlike the last iteration where we saw the MFB, this time the MFB has basically nothing to heal. This frigate can't really do too much against the Octopod. It only deals about 7 damage per second against ground, while Octopods deal 5 damage per second against air, and given that Octopods have 300 health to frigates 180, there is no contest. With the MFB, it's a little bit helpful, but the MFB is... Really, it's dealing more... It's healing more the macro than the frigate, it's just that it's also taking the damage from... It's tanking for the frigate. It needs to heal itself, though. It's going down, the second body is going to not quite take it down. 10 health left. The MFB just barely alive, and playing the altruist, healing the frigate before it heals itself. Oh, never mind. No, it's it's gone back to being selfish. The mobile field base is healing itself, but that's fine. It is tanking the damage. It should be healing itself. A blackbird being built as well. The other healer unit, and also the cloaked assault unit for CISO. Really more of a cloaked stealth harasser, but the healing unit is the main role. Regardless, Cybernetic Pony has at this point gotten in crime reporting. He has gotten a massive economy. He is well ahead of Shalka. I don't see a way out of this for Shalka. At the 1919 mark, he is getting Gate Tech as well. Not a bad idea, but he should get another Macrofab just to get the output of units he needs. Because Grecum, of course, 
Oh, and this Octo is actually going to pay off. Spotting Shalka's Marine. That Octo there, very good idea from Cybernetic Pony. Now, Shalka is getting this resource processor attacked, dealing some damage to it, and Cybernetic Pony does see this happening, but I don't think he cares. In fact, looks like he might be already intercepting it with these units that he has sent out. And yep, he's spotting the expansion, getting rid of that, and his units are in place to stop the harassment of that frigate. So Shalka can't really do much of anything right now, fortunately. That chronoporting is, like I said, his only chance. He needs a mech, he needs... Oh, gates, obviously. He needs the mech to build his gates. He needs, from there, more units. And to get more units, he needs to get more macrofabs. Otherwise, he won't get units fast enough. But he is not going for that, and... Actually... Oh, never mind. Shaka doesn't have gate tech at this point in time. He got it further in the future. And he actually he doesn't even have it at all. His research has been cancelled, going entirely for units. Instead, we do not see a yellow bar on the units created line signifying gate tech research. So Cybernetic Pony is the only player with chronoporting and surprisingly has not used it. Likely to using it with this assault, this assault going into Shalka's base. Once it meets up with the Sepipod, we'll probably chronoport back just to finish the job. And Shalka, at the 16 minute mark, likely not prepared for any assault coming back in time. Especially as he's moving his frigates out of position to save this one resource processor. And his Octopod almost in place to chronoport back. Cybernetic Pony, his forces are in place. Is he going to go for the chronoport? That's the real question. From his point of view, he sees Shalka's assault. Shalka's harassment actually doing a fair amount of damage, not getting intercepted ultimately because the units went over to the other side. And there we go. There's that chronoport I was looking for. And it will be hitting probably around the 1630 mark. At that point, there really isn't much going for it. And it looks like... Oh, we don't have an observer at the pass there. And I don't feel like possibly jeopardizing the replay by jumping back there myself. A mech is being built up. Shalka, however, does not have the cash for gate tech. He built so many units that he lost the money for gate tech. I don't think he realizes it at this point. But he should fairly soon. His harassment is actually working fairly well, but this is after Cybernetic Pony's chronoport. And there we go. The chronoport hit at the 1626 mark. It is attacking, and... Did it... I think there was a Chrono Frag there, or very nearly one. Hopefully he jumps back to that point to double check how the assault went, because he's losing a lot of units. This, there are a lot of deaths in the timeline. These flashing white lines here, that's all death. Cybernetic Pony is losing a lot of units, but he is still dealing a lot of damage. Looks like there was just a small amount of resistance to get through, after which point he's in the clear and tearing apart Shalka's base. Shalka, on the other hand, losing a lot of units in the unplayable past. I think this is going to be game. I don't think Shalka has any answer to this. He is harassing fairly effectively, but I believe these units are going to be destroyed. I think the Mac is probably what got killed. Cybernetic Pony has not jumped back to check that out, though, so I really don't know. And Shalka is going to check that out. And yes, that Mac is dead. No frigates are in place. These RPs are gone. The units... All that damage they dealt, that is huge. So Shalka basically has no base anymore, or very soon losing it. Yep, these units moving in place. And there's not much that can be done to deal with that. It looks like these are the pre chronoportes though. No, never mind, they have to be the post chronoportes The chronoport happened earlier. So, that is basically game. Shalka has no answer to this. No units in the field. His Macrofab, his only real asset, is down. That is it. So, like I said, a second Macrofab would have done wonders. Because Shalka actually really had that. Just the Martank early on, focusing too heavily on the Martanks, getting some frigates would have saved that. Getting some frigates, and especially if he got ground units to get Twin Mars. The combination of that would have saved that assault and won in the game at the 5 minute mark. Because that wasn't a bad rush for this map, but it just did not have a good follow through. It did not account for air, and ultimately, and didn't account for the fact that Octos are fairly tough. Ultimately, that cost him the game. Still, it was close. It just wasn't quite enough. And it looks like Shalka is double checking, seeing if he can't. See if he can't get Gate Tech and build a gate and Chronoport stuff back, and no, he cannot. He does not have Gate Tech at this point. It would take too long to research. This time it was coming. He is, however, going for it nonetheless. 25 minute mark does have Gate Tech. But, like I said, it will not be enough. Trying to paradox this in. Very valiant move. Bold strategy. But even if he pulls it off, he doesn't have the Q Plasma to actually Chronoport any of these units. Or maybe one. Let's see, Blackbird has a Chronoport cost of... Oh, we don't know yet. Gate Tech's not been researched. 
it's somewhere around 60 or so. I mean, one unit is going to be more than this, or two units is going to be more than this can handle. One unit is barely enough. And even then, he has to build the gate, which is 25 Q Plasma on its own. And he only has about 10 real time seconds to do it in. And that's not going to happen. And he's hit, the edge the he's hit the edge of the timeline. The green time of coming in, and that will call it a Chrono Porter being built and gone with the time wave, as is Shalka's entire base. Bold move, but nothing can be done about that. Shalka throws in the towel. Oh, and Cronenberg points out that that Cronenport is actually out of range to save himself. Actually, a point, but not the necessarily the most meaningful one. If he Cronenberg back to military units with a Marine and saved the Marine, it was still in the playable past. He might have just barely gone out of that. I mean, it wouldn't have worked. It was like a 1 in 10 billion chance. But it would have been entertaining. However, that didn't work out. And that was the game we had. I hope you enjoyed that, and that will be it for me tonight. So, have a good night, everybody.